Hi guys, welcome back to End of Life Computing. Today uh, we're gonna have a look at this Amiga 500. Uh, the yellow beauty, uh, well it's now yellow, um, I have to take care of that. Um, I got it from a friend of mine and um, she wants to have it looked at, um, maybe uh, repaired uh, and obviously retro -brighted. Um but uh, first we have to look what it's what's wrong with it and uh, if it even works so uh, let's start by hooking this one up well so as you can see here it's uh, more yellow than I promised you um, we can fix that pretty easily um, but let's have a look around it's um, standard Amiga 500 um, we have some um, gooey stuff in here between the keys uh, let me take that up to you yeah that's pretty gross in there uh, well the standard stuff you have in these old machines um, but nothing a good cleaning can fix um, yeah, we have uh, nothing on this side, but the cover's still on. That's good. Um, whoops. We have nothing special on this side. There's no selector or anything. Um, so, no modifications, as far as I can tell from the outside. Uh, let's have a look at the back. <clears throat> so. That looks pretty normal. This seat is broken, so someone was inside. Um, we have a bit of rust spots around these RF shield, but it doesn't look that bad from here. Uh, no, that's just goo. Uh, okay, the bottom. Uh, well, the trap door is missing. That's one point. And we have an expansion card and this uh, it looks like the battery leaked from the expansion card hopefully it's just the expansion card um, and nothing more that doesn't look too bad for now well we have all the VTs we have all the screws as it seems well, doesn't look half bad on the outside. <laughs> okay, well, let's have a smoke test. And let's have a look. Well, the light comes on and we have a workbench. Mm, well, okay. So this seems normal. Let's try to read something. Let's try a workbench disk. That sounds not good. Well, let's hope the disc is just better. And let's try an official. Let me try to give you a listening example. So that's what it sounds. 
I think maybe a bit grease. Hmm. Okay, well, it does boot. So let's have a look inside and uh, see what we can see there. First, I removed the expansion couch, and as you can see, the battery did indeed leak. You can also see some of the leakage on the pins, which turn green from the acid. After that, it's time to remove all the screws from the case. Okay, most old machines are dirty inside, but this particular Amiga 500 seems to have been used by Chewbacca. So, let's see what's under this, oh boy. Well, this doesn't look good. You know, I hate these spacing screws, because I always need to use pliers to unscrew them, because I just never seem to have the right nut for it around. You know, except when it's lying next to me, the whole time. Yeah, so the RF shield looks pretty bad. But like a miracle, the plastic insulation layer kept the corrosion from reaching the board. First thing to address is cleaning up all the plastic parts in the bathtub with warm water and a bit of soap. Let's see how much of the corrosion we can clean off with just soapy water. At least the insulation layer looks completely clean.
and the bottom shell looks okay too. But now for the Chewbacca hairs and the loose rust on the shielding. Then the next step in removing the corrosion was just sanding down all the surface rust. After removing all the surface rust and my elbows feeling like they were 100 years old, I resorted to some rust converter. After some more applications with the rust remover, all the corrosion was gone. But as the chemicals leave some unpretty black stains, I coated the shielding parts with zinc spray. Now for the retro brighting. I 
I actually prefer using cream hydrogen peroxide. It's not actually better or worse than the liquid variant. It has some pros and cons of its own and in the end I think it's a personal matter. After that I put it under UV light in this perfectly Amiga 500 fitting IKEA box. It's time to give the keyboard and especially the keys some love. Okay, it's getting ridiculous. We can build a second Chewbacca out of all this hair and dust. Oh, and we also have some corrosion around here, which I missed the first time around. While cleaning off the rust, I realized it would probably be way more easier to clean all the parts when I disassemble the keyboard. Now it's much easier to clean the PCB. And alongside the keycaps I can just 
wash all the other plastic parts too. And this is the part where most people will call me crazy because yes, I still prefer cream hydrogen peroxide even for the keycaps, even if it takes a long time, but I just don't have that much good experience with liquid hydrogen peroxide and keycaps. They just don't get that white. But I guess it's more a problem of me applying the liquid variant than liquid hydrogen peroxide itself. Of course, after this, the keycaps also got some of the UV light. And we finally get to the main attraction, namely the main PCB of the A500. There's luckily only minor corrosion on the pins and it's easily cleaned off. For future proofing, I plan to exchange all the electrolytic capacitors with new ones. Also, some of these components are really stubborn. The solder just kept blocking the holes. So after this board I tried to up my solder skills a bit and found some good tutorials on how to get these holes from the solder flowing back in. And it seems like a combination of a desoldering gun and the hot air station does the trick. But for this project we all have to watch me suffer through this.
know, this took a long time. But now I can finally disassemble and service this disk drive. Besides cleaning off all the internal parts, I also cleaned off the reed whitehead and gave the motor a bit of grease. and also some rust converter for these corroded spots. The fun part is always when you have to put everything back together and hopes that it still fits and that you didn't lose some parts on the way. Especially keyboard caps are always a fun puzzle. For the missing crack door, I just 3D printed a replacement, sanded it down a bit and later spray painted it with some kind of beige color. And here we have everything laid before us. Here you can also see the expansion card which I tried to rescue but it was just too far gone. The zinc spray shielding looks pretty okay in my opinion. Let's get to the reassembly. And what did I forget? Mm -hmm. 
And I finally remember that I have the correct nut for these. So where do these cables go? Ah, oh, damn it. Here I'm inserting the expansion card because I couldn't test it until now, but it still looks very, very broken. So some time has passed uh, since we assembled this thing and um, I tried some things out and um, yeah, well, um, i show you what it's doing and what it's not doing. Um, first of all, uh, it does boot. Now you see the issue. Um, the expansion card is not registered, which is not surprising. Uh, <laughs> it looked pretty destroyed. Uh, well, it was worth a try to salvage that thing. And, um, there are also a couple of things I could do here. Um, I could revisit the expansion card, um, try to make it work. Maybe something went wrong with um, the modifications I did. Um, but to be honest, um, as cheap as they are, I'm just gonna swap it out with a new one. And yeah, then we'll see if that works or if it's the expansion slot itself which is faulty so yeah let's get that thing inside there so now i have the new expansion card in there and while this one is booting um yeah well, that's no work of art and um, I have to look up if there are some traces um, not connecting or if the components are faulty. And that's just too much work for now for this small piece of cheap PCB. <laughs> So, as we can see, uh, the expansion card is actually registered. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely the card. And now we try to set the date. Okay. So, let's have a look if that's saved. Let's wait a couple of minutes. Okay, a couple of minutes later. Let's have a look. The date and time is saved. And... Yes, it did save the time and date. Perfect.
So the system's running. And yeah, one last thing to do to play some games. So let's check in. Lemmings. As I don't have a joystick ready just now. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Let's get one player going. Sounds working nice. Oh, it's been so long. Well, it's always nice to play an Xmas game in May. Well, it looks great, it sounds great. Wonderful, wonderful. And now we let them fall to the death. Yeah. Cool, let's have a resume. So this is another 500 done. My second one actually. And um, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it and um, well this was like a training video for me um, how to well not how to do a video uh, but um, what mistakes I can do uh, what I have to do better and um, first thing would be um, use a better camera when assembling things uh, Second would be a uh, better script. Um, third thing, uh, a better camera while assembling things. Um, and maybe some more stuff. Maybe you can put some things down in the comments, what I can do better. Um, of course, I looked up some um, other people, how they do their uh, videos. Um, but I try to find my own style and um, see what happens afterwards. And yeah, maybe you'll be there next time when I have a better camera, <laughs> which is already in the mail. And yeah, thanks for watching.